Hello there, Ivar here. In this video, I'm going to take you through the fish tank exercise in week 4, subsection 2. To start off with, we have a tank which is partially filled with water, which will slowly evaporate. The ambient pressure is atmospheric and the water is, is at the same temperature as the, the air, which is 20 degrees or 293.15 kelvins. The significance of this we will see later. The first task is to look up the vapor pressure of water. And if you look it up on Wikipedia, the value is 2339 Pascal. On the, on the other hand, if you look it up in the data sheet most commonly referred to in this field of transport phenomena, you will obtain a, a water vapor pressure of 2337 Pascals, which is just two Pascal difference, not too far off. Since you had to look it up on the internet in the exercise, we'll continue with the Wikipedia value for the rest of the questions. In question 4.2.7, the ideal gas law is used in order to calculate the saturated concentration of the vapor just above the liquid, which is meant as infinitesimally close to the surface. So in the sketch it goes here. The ideal gas law then reads as the product of pressure and volume is equal to the amount of moles in the gas multiplied by the gas constant and the temperature. Take note that this temperature is the absolute temperature in kelvins. Otherwise, the ideal gas law would allow for negative pressures or volumes, which would make no sense. The required concentration, which we will call C star, is then equal to the mass divided by the volume. The mass is the amount of moles times the molar mass, the volume we acquire just by rewriting the ideal gas law. And then if we fill in the numbers, we'll arrive at the concentration of 0 0.017 kilograms per cube meter. Continuing on to the next question of the ex exercise, we are required to define the boundary conditions imposed on the concentration profile. We are also allotted some more parameters. The area of the tank open to the air, which is called A, is positioned at the top of the tank. The concentration just above it is zero. The boundary conditions on the concentration as a function of x are then just the two known concentrations at the heights h and h plus l. The next question, question 9, asks for an expression for the concentration profile. We, we are already provided with the information that the profile is linear, so c of x should equal the a function ax plus b with a and b yet to be determined. If we fill in the boundary conditions we obtained previously, we obtain two, equ two equations with two unknowns which we should be able to solve. We can use the second equation to rewrite A in terms of B and plug this e expression in the other equation. Some more rewriting to a common denominator will yield an expression in which some terms negate each other and then we can just solve for B in a fairly straightforward manner. To Arrive at the multiple choice answer in the form required from the expression obtained here is a trivial matter. Okay, since I'm out of space, I'm starting on a new page. So I'm quickly resketching the tank with the relevant parameters. Within question 10, the diffusion coefficient and the dimensions of the tank are given. The area is width times length, both 25 cent centimeters, 
The water level is at 40 centimeters and the distance of the top to the tank to the water level is 10. 50 minus 40 is 10 centimeters. Since the concentration profile of the water vapor as a function of x was linear, the derivative of the concentration with respect to x is just the total difference in concentration divided by the distance traveled. The mass flux is discerned by using Fick's law, which can be simplified as stated before, it's linear. The total difference in concentration is the concentration at the end, zero, minus the concentration just above the water. The total distance traveled is the distance between the top of the tank and the water. The mass flow rate is determined by the product of mass flux and area perpendicular to the flux. And then we just plug in the known parameters and obtain the flow rate in kilograms per second. The answer was required to be given in grams per day, so a quick transformation from S standard units to grams per day yields 22.4 grams per day. The last few questions deal with some general insights. The first of which asks which, which changing variable will have the largest influence on the mass flow rate when the temperature increases? The diffusion coefficient, the distance between the top of the tank and the water, or the vapor pressure? Well, to start off with, the diffusion coefficient hardly changes at all. The length L will depend on the change in the cubic expansion coefficient, of which I will give the definition and, change, and changing numbers here. In essence, just ask yourself how much your water expands when you cook or when it's hot outside, how much does the water level of the sea rise. If it were any significant change, we would not really be able to keep our kitchen from being flooded. The vapor pressure, however, does change quite significantly from 2339 Pascal we had before to 47 kilopascals. So the pressure definitely has the biggest in influence. So then if the water vapor in the air above the tank does not have concentration zero for question 12 this is, the delta C decreases. So Fick's law dictates that the mass flow rate will decrease. And similarly for the last question, if the water level in the tank drops, the distance we call delta x decreases. So Fick's law once again dictates that the mass flow rate will decrease. As always, if there are any questions left about this exercise, please post it to the forum and we will answer it in due time. Good luck with the rest of the exercises.